I think it's safe to say that it was a little unexpected to see you, you know, be a part of this card. Can you just talk about how long you've been looking to get back in there to fight? Uh, I've been looking to get back for a while, but it uh, just couldn't get anything together. And then they kind of offered this one on like a few weeks notice. And I'm like, all right, I guess we're going to fight. So it is what it is. Uh, Let's just go fight. Can I ask, what was it that they couldn't seem to get you a fight? Was it just the right name, the right timing? Because obviously there's been a lot going on lately at Welterweight. Yeah, I mean, all of the above. I mean, me, them, whatever. Just never worked out. It doesn't really matter. Just fighting this week, which is nice. Has haven't fought for a while, and it's nice to get back in there and get to work. I think more so than in some of your more recent fights, they're very fond of playing a lot of those classic Robbie Lawler fights, those when you first got to the UFC and his original knockouts. I mean, Robbie, like, this is 2020. You're still out there fighting ranked guys at the top of the game. What's the secret, man? Not everybody is able to make it this far and still be at this level. Uh, I don't know. I just uh, enjoy what I do uh... Obviously, I take care of myself, and I have good coaches around me to help me uh, prepare uh, really good training partners, and I just love doing this, and I love competing, and just a great opportunity to go out there and have some fun. What does it mean to you when you have guys like Dana or even like your opponent saying, you know, hey, when you know you're signing up to fight Robbie Lawler, you know you're signing up to fight that dude, that beast, that no quit, always going to be coming at you to do damage. What's it like to know you go out there carrying that reputation? Mm, I'm not too worried about reputation. I mean, I just go out there and be me and try to beat people up. And, I mean, that's for other people to feel a certain way. But I feel the same. I'm just going to work, having a good time, and fighting my ass off. Final one for me, I mean, uh, people wonder, it's like, hey, you know, like, he's already had such a great career. Are you still looking to get out there and make that run for the title? Is it just about competing and getting in fights? What's motivating you at this stage? Uh, right now, I'm just competing one step at a time. It's like you can't, you have to get past this fight, showcase your skills, and, and let, let people know who you are. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, training partners did a great job of getting me ready for this fight coaches put together a good game plan and had enough time to uh, make sure I'm, I'm ready to go so everyone at Sanford's done a great job with me and I'm excited to get out there thanks Robbie we will take our next set of questions from Jim Barcelona with the Miami Herald thank you Robbie you mentioned Sanford and I want to address Sanford MMA what's that been like that transition because there's so much it's not just about the training there's so much going on there with that partnership that's going on. What has it meant to you? What has it meant to other fighters and everybody there? Uh, it's just awesome to have Sanford on board with a, a really good uh, company. i uh, been around them for uh, many years, and for them to jump on board, it really solidifies us as a team, lets everyone know uh, that we're out there. Uh, we have really good coaches, really good fighters, and uh, now we have a really good company behind us, a uh, healthcare uh, company and and we're really excited to build this they're going to help us build and we're going to help them build and it's just great for our coaches and our uh, fighters to uh, be a part of something great hey robbie what have you been doing during the pandemic and how much training have you been able to get in the last fight was august of last year correct so what's been going on from that time till this time just sorting through the regular and then sorting through the pandemic yeah, just trying to work on my skills, uh, switching up diet type situations, uh, making sure, uh, just hanging out with the family. I mean, same old, same old, obviously, uh, people out there are acting a little crazy, but I'm okay with it, how everything's going on. I like being alone, like being, uh, I like social distancing. <laughs> I'm forced to, though. That's, that's the difference. I like to be in charge of that kind of stuff but 
I mean, uh, we have really good coaches, really good training partners. We, uh, we've done a great job of staying in shape and uh, making each other better. So it's nice being at Sanford MMA and having uh, really good people around us. You like social distancing except for fight night when you want to get in there and just take care of the guy and get him out of there. <laughs> yeah, that's a big there and, and uh, drop some bombs. <laughs> All right, a couple more for me. I'll let you go. Uh, South Florida, South Florida, you've been down here for a while. Various coaching and training in different places, and now it's Sanford MMA, which is great. What is it about South Florida that sort of made it sort of a hotbed of MMA? Um. I don't know, a couple of big gyms, uh, really good training partners, really good coaches, and obviously uh, the nice weather. Uh, taxes aren't too bad there either. So, I mean, the weather and the beaches and who knows, but really good training partners, really good coaches. And that's about it. And lastly, who did you bring with you for the fight? I have Greg Jones, Henry Hooft, and uh, Hoagie, Wayne Hoganson. We care chiropractic. <laughs> yeah, get, the, get the plug in. <laughs> all right, Robbie. All the best, man. Thank you. We will take our next questions from Pablo Santa Maria with Noti MMA Ecuador. Yep. Uh, first of all, it's an honor to greet you. May I want to ask you. If, if you were going to bring violence to the octagon this Saturday because you're a fan favorite because of that reason, because whenever you are in the octagon, it's always blood and violence. Uh, what was the question? If you're going to be bring violence to the octagon in this Saturday. Uh, I always fight a certain way, and, and that's usually uh, try to get right in the guy's face and... and uh, create a fight and, and get into a fight. Uh, that's what the sport's about, I believe. I mean, if guys are technical, obviously there's going to be technique involved, but push comes to shove, we're out there fighting and uh, trying to uh, inflict a little damage on each other. Okay, so it's your first fight on this COVID situation. How was the fight camp and the fight week? And if they uh, exceed something that you missed from the other fight weeks or camps? Uh, I would say, obviously, it's a little different. I mean, uh, obviously, the world is acting a little crazy right now, but you just kind of focus on the things you can control, which is how you train, how you work out, the things you're eating, you don't focus on those other kind of things. But everything has gone really well. UFC has done a great job of uh, getting uh, 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 these fighters, mm -hmm ways to uh, get out there and uh, make a little money during this time. It's nice to go out there and compete and do it. And what's your prediction for the fight? Uh, just go out there and uh, do what I do best. Go out there and uh, push the pace and look to get a finish. <laughs>